Uh, hi everyone, my name's Lang, I'm a software engineer at Apple, and I'm here today to tell you about what's new in the LLVM JIT. Uh, just a quick recap, the last update was at the uh, virtual developers meeting in 2021, and that talk covered the three primary components of the Orc JIT APIs. The Orc Core, which coordinates actions, JIT Link, which links JITted code together, and the Orc Runtime, which provides support functions to JITted code. Now, if you put those three components together, you get a bunch of features. We can use regular static compilers like LLVM in a JIT context. We can compile lazily and concurrently. We can execute JITted code in a separate process. We have low-level control over JITted machine code through the JIT linker APIs. And we can, get, uh, we can use dynamic loader features like static initializers, deinitializers, and thread local storage. If you're interested in the details of how all that fits together, you can check out that talk from 2021 at the link below. Don't worry if you miss it now, I'll post it in the LLVM Discord in a minute. So what I wanted to talk to you about today is what we've been up to since then. The headline is that we've seen a lot of adoption and a lot of new community contributions. So up front, I wanted to say a huge thank you to everybody who's gotten involved over the last couple of years. The work that we've been doing has fallen into four broad categories. The first one is platform coverage. If you want to use the features that I just mentioned, you need a JITLINK backend for your target. And as we'll see, the community's contributed a number of new ones. We've also added some new features, improved code quality, and added some new convenience APIs to make uh, basic JIT use cases easier to read and understand. And a theme that I'm going to come to a couple of times over the course of this talk is that the work has progressed to the point that we can now reasonably talk about deprecating and removing MC JIT. So I'll come back to that uh, in, in the course of the talk. But first, that platform coverage. Uh, so back in 2011, oh, sorry, 2021, uh, the situation looked like this. Uh, green circles here are usable backends, orange squares are uh, partially supported. On Darwin, the situation was pretty good. On Linux, we had a working RISC-V backend and partial x86-64 support. Uh, fast forward to, to, to uh, today, a little under two years later, and thanks to community contributions, uh, that x86-64 backend on Linux is in good shape. We've added an Arch 64 backend, LongArch, PowerPC-64, both little and big Endian, and we have uh, ARCH32 and i386 Linux backends under development. We also have a native Windows backend for x86-64, courtesy of Sunho Kim, who wrote that for his Google Summer of Code project last year. If you're interested in seeing how he got native Windows jitting working in LLVM, you can check out his talk at the link below. So looking ahead, there are a couple of backends that I'd really love to see next year. Uh, ARCH64 for Windows and BPF for Linux. And those are backends that I know are currently in use uh, that are written in runtime DYLD. I'd love those users to be able to move over to JITLINK. There's also a few backends that I'm not sure about. So we have runtime DYLD backends for Linux MIPS and Windows ARCH32 and i386, but I don't really know if they're in use anymore. So if you're using one of those backends or any other backend that you don't see in this table, uh, please come and talk to me. I'd love to know what coverage we're missing. Uh, so looking ahead, our goal is to get to feature parity with Runtime DYLD for all of the backends that we do care about so that we can deprecate and remove Runtime DYLD and MCJIT. On to features. Uh, on Darwin, we have improved Swift and Objective-C support in JITted code. We now register the language metadata for these languages using the obj map images and obj load image APIs. These are the same APIs that are used by the system dynamic loader. The upshot of this is that uh, Swift extensions and Objective-C categories should now work in jitted code, and interoperability between jitted Swift and Objective-C is improved. I don't want to call these languages 100% supported yet, but that you can now run non-trivial Swift and Objective-C code under the JIT, and we're aiming for full support next year. We also have improved jitted code debugging on Darwin. Uh, we're working on a protocol to communicate memory layout changes in the JIT to the debugger using stab symbols. That will allow us to maintain source line information even when the JIT moves things around in memory. Uh, onto generic APIs, we have new APIs for memory management and profiling. So we have the Mapper JIT Link Memory Manager that was contributed by Anubhab Ghosh for his uh, Google Summer of Code last year. This is an allocator that reserves address space up front to avoid uh, relocation out of range errors. So if you've ever used awk or MCJIT with the default memory manager and gotten a relocation range out of range error, 
The solution is almost certainly to move to ORC and use a NubHub's allocator, uh, and that should fix the issue. The other really cool thing about his allocator is that you can swap out the underlying uh, allocation primitive the same way that you used to be able to do with the section memory manager. Uh, and we have off-the-shelf support for uh, uh, shared memory for jitted code and data when you're running jitted code in a separate process on the same machine. You can check out uh, Anubab's talk from last year's dev meeting for the details on that. We also have uh, support for Intel Perf profiling for jitted code, courtesy of uh, Prem Chintal Pudi of the Julia community. So if you install this plugin, you can then run the Linux to uh, Perf tool on your jitted code. Prem also posted a review for an Intel VTune profiling support plugin, but unfortunately he's gotten busy with other work. So that profile is sitting there waiting for somebody to pick it up and add some tests and tidy it up. If anybody's interested in picking that up and running with it, uh, please let me know. Uh, the last new feature that I'll mention very briefly is re-optimization. So this is the idea that you would compile code at a low optimization level to get it up and running quickly, and then switch to uh, re-optimize the code uh, at a higher level and swap in the implementation to get better runtime performance. I'm not going to go into any detail on that because Sunho Kim has a whole talk on that at 4.15 PM today. So if you're interested in generic re-optimization in the LLVM JIT APIs, go and check out Sunho's talk. Uh, in terms of code quality, uh, and a, a brief digression before we get to quality on the difference between quality and stability. One of the big advantages of MCJIT has been stability. Because we're not actively developing it, it's been the same year after year. But that's not the same as it being high quality. Just one data point on that, if you search for calls to report fatal error, which we never want to see in library code. Uh, when I did this the other day, I found 59 references to this function. Uh, 53 of which were in uh, MCJIT and Runtime DYLD. There were a handful in the interpreter. There are no references to this in ORC or JITLINK. So while MCJIT is very stable, the ORC APIs, I think, already meet a higher bar for quality. And we're going to keep working on that. Uh, in the last couple of years, we've been improving error handling, in particular, better error plumbing for cross-process jitting and concurrent jitting. And we're adding unit and regression tests that simulate errors to verify that our error handling pathways are correct. On the performance front, we're moving to more asynchronous operations and away from using uh, mutexes. So uh, for example, definition generator serialization is now done by suspending lookups that are waiting on busy generators rather than by blocking threads on mutexes. Finally, we're working to reduce library dependencies and so reduce code size for JIT clients. For example, APIs that need dwarf debug info uh, are now being put in a separate ORC debugging library. So if you don't need that, you don't have to link it and you don't have to pay the code size. Finally, uh, on convenience APIs, if you've never used the LLVM JIT before, uh, this is how you create an LLVM JIT instance. It's just one line of code. Uh, but when you got your JIT instance back, if you wanted to run, say, a jitted hello world and call printf in your process, you immediately needed a bunch of extra boilerplate to make those process symbols available to the LLVM JIT. So the first bit of convenience is you don't have to do that anymore. Uh, your default JIT instance will automatically reflect symbols from the surrounding process. So your jitted hello world will work out of the box. You can opt back out of this behavior by calling set link process symbols by default false when you configure your JIT. There was some similar boilerplate that was required anytime you used a static or dynamic library from jitted code. We've got convenience functions to make that easier now as well. So if you want to make a dynamic library available to jitted code, you can just say jit.load dynamic library and the path on disk to the dynamic library, and then you can use functions in that library from jitted code. Similarly, if you have a static archive that you want to add to your jit, you can just call jit link static archive into. If you want to use the advanced features from the ORC runtime, like native thread local storage, well, first you'll have to build the ORC runtime, and that's part of compiler RT. So you can do this by just adding d LLVM enable runtimes equals compiler RT to your CMake invocation. Once you've done that, when you configure your JIT, you can just say set platform setup, execute a native platform, and the path to the ORC runtime that is built as part of compiler RT. Finally, if your jitted code has debug info and you want to arrange for that to be passed on to the debugger so that you can actually debug your jitted code, you just need to link that ORC debugging library that I mentioned and then call enable debugger support on your JIT class. 
So that's what we've been up to, or a sample of what we've been up to. Where to next? Uh, the first thing is MC JIT deprecation. So in terms of platform coverage, we're almost there. We just need a few more backends that Runtime DYLD has that we don't have in uh, JITLink yet. Our debugger support is already better. Our profiling support is getting there. We need to land that VTune patch, and we might need O profiling support as well if anybody's using that. Our quality bar is already higher, so I think the main thing that we need now is to be stable enough that MCJIT clients can move over. Uh, historically, it's been very stable. People have been insulated from the day-to-day -day churn. Uh, so I think what we need to do so that MCJIT clients can move over with confidence is try to define a subset of the ORC API, an MCJIT-like subset of the ORC APIs that are stable enough that people could move with confidence. So I'm going to start a thread on that on the LLVM discourse uh, going on vacation tomorrow. So I'll start a thread in a couple of weeks when I get back from vacation, and we can start talking about this. We're not going to take MCJIT away straight away, but we do need to start talking about it uh, so that we can move forward and focus our uh, engineering effort on the new APIs. So if you're interested in getting involved in any of this, there are those JITLink backends still to write. Uh, we still need that VTune profiling support to land. We still might want O profiling support. And there are interesting open problems in API design, library layering, testing, and documentation in the LLVM JIT. So if you're interested in getting involved, uh, please reach out to me either here at the conference, or you can usually catch me on the uh, hash JIT channel of the LLVM Discord. Um, yeah, I'd love to help you get involved. Thank you very much.